So I wanted to share something really cool with you guys. I shot this billboard. I'm gonna try and get away a little bit from this road noise, but... Yeah, I can't believe that I actually shot this billboard. You know, as a photographer, that's kind of like a pretty crazy accomplishment. I never thought I would get to that. It's about to start pouring. So I had to go somewhere else that's more quiet because I didn't realize how much highway noise there was there. It's literally right off the highway and I couldn't hear a thing. So before it starts raining, just going on a quick one wheel ride to explain a little bit about that. So I was hired by this team in my area to take new team photos for them. And I didn't know it was gonna go up on a billboard till I was actually at the shoot. Luckily I had my friend helping me and it went really smoothly, but once they told me that, I got really stressed because I've never done that before. I've never gotten a photo on a billboard, but it worked out and it was pretty cool. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I first started out as a photographer, uh, one of the things on like my photo bucket list, if you will, was to get a photo on a billboard. You know, I thought that would be so out of reach and really impossible to do, especially when I first started out and barely was making any money. And the fact that finally got to this point is, you know, kind of incredible. The fact that this company or my photography is like worth enough to do that is kind of crazy. So hitting milestones like this is pretty important because it's always one of those things that, at least for me, lets me know I'm on the right track and advancing in my craft. You know, there's times whenever you're kind of like stuck doing the same things or maybe you're not getting as much work or makes you feel like you're not really advancing in the things that you do or like in your passion. And when these things happen, these milestones kind of like reassure you and just kind of, you know, make you make you really realize how much you've come in your craft. Uh, because it's not, this billboard thing is not like an easy investment for them, you know. It's probably thousands of dollars a month to have that marketing visual up there. And it's just so cool that they entrusted me to take it, so. So lastly, I thought it would be really cool to also show you guys a behind the scenes on how we shot this photo and just of the shoot because I had my friend Wes there because we also did a video for them. So I brought him out and we got a whole bunch of behind the scenes. So let's get back to the office before it starts pouring because it's about to start pouring on me and just go get a little bit of a rundown on how we did it. So not only did I wanna share the behind the scenes of this shoot, but I also wanted to share four tips with shooting team or just big group photos, you know, for companies, for real estate teams, like this shoot was, because honestly what I've learned, it can be pretty challenging sometimes. So the idea for the shoot was that this team is now pretty big. They wanted to update their marketing media stuff. So they wanted to take like a really high end, almost editorial style uh, team photo where everyone was dressed really nicely and they wanted it at the top of a high rise building where you could see Houston in the background. So I know the idea in a sense doesn't sound very complicated, but the timing of everything was really difficult because there's a lot of things to factor in mind because we're inside and the outside is gonna be, you know, theoretically super overexposed. And so one of the things I had to do for the shoot was take actually, aside from just the group shot, take one shot where they're basically like silhouetted so I could get all the detail in the background. That was pretty challenging, but luckily I made it work and basically I put that in the windows of the shot. So now before getting into the rest of this shoot, let's dive into the four tips for taking better group shots. Okay, so tip number one. Now you're on set, you're getting ready to start organizing people and just getting your stuff set up. The first thing you wanna do is before even getting to the shoot, have some sort of initial vision of what they want done. If you don't have an idea of what they want and maybe you're just going off what you think might be cool, it's not gonna work out. It'd be a good idea for them to even send you examples or kind of what they're thinking to give you some sort of direction on what they want the shoot to look like. Because for example, you might be like a really moody, high contrast, editing photographer and they want maybe a light and airy or type thing. Um, and the reason I mention that is because they even said it with my work, they're like, you know, your stuff's super awesome. It's really sharp, clean. We just wanna make sure that this is a little bit more like 
on the lighter side and not just, you know, harsh shadows or like cinematic looking. So that was a good pointer to have. So along with that, once you're on the shoot and you're about to start organizing people, you wanna have someone from the team help you organize the groupings. They've already worked with everyone, they're familiar with them, and they might want everyone organized in some sort of uh, order based on their position, their role. Then once everyone was kind of where they're supposed to be, I used my creative aspect, where they should be maybe adjusting them, things like that. Like I wanted maybe like a few top people in the center, shorter on the side things like that that make the image look more flattering, give it more dimension. But having someone help you in the beginning to at least initially get everyone sort of settled is a great pointer because otherwise, at least for me, it always seems like it's all over the place whenever I've had to do it in the past just by myself. Okay, tip number two is use proper lighting. Lighting for these things are super important. Even if you're a natural light photographer, I highly encourage for you to kind of learn how to use flash or even some really strong constant lighting because one of the things for these types of shoots in specific is you want everyone to be evenly exposed. So if you're in a setting like this, you know, it might work outdoors. If you're outdoors, you might not need to do flash and stuff, but in a setting like this, it wouldn't have been possible to actually get the shot that we did without using flash or any sort of lighting. Because, brings me back to what I said earlier, the outside was so overexposed that I still had to basically shoot pretty dark, but then have my flash compensate uh, the pop, if you will, so everyone was kind of lit and then uh, the exposures were the same from the inside and the outside. So what I was using is basically my real estate setup, which is just a Canon speed light flash with a trigger system on top of this softbox, actually, my video light softbox. This is an Aperture Light Dome 2. And I basically have a little attachment where I can put my flash in there. And the great thing about this one, uh, which is even fantastic for video, is that it's really soft. Same thing with the flash though. Whenever I would trigger it, it hits everyone like a nice soft light that's not gonna be harsh and look like unflattering. So it was definitely a must for this shoot. But another thing that we had to do too was this wasn't strong enough. I should have been using a stronger flash or a stronger like, you know, actual off-camera flash system, but that's all I had and I thought that was enough. But luckily my friend Wes came and he brought his uh, tube lights. I don't remember what brand they are, but we had two tube lights on each side, basically lighting the corners where this light wasn't spreading enough. So use proper lighting. You'll definitely need it because that way you can also manipulate more stuff in editing. If everyone is already kind of near the same exposure, you can kind of touch them up with dodge and burning and get a better result. Tip number three, take multiple shots and variations of the shot. So for this particular shot, the final edited one that you see, we probably took anywhere from like 50 to 60 shots of that. And it maybe took like 20 to 30 minutes. I mean, that was like the goal photo. No, probably an hour, like 30 minutes just to set up and like get everyone organized. So yeah, it took a while, but the whole reason you wanna do that is because let me give you a scenario. You might start out where you're gonna take this shot, everyone looks great, it's organized, it's awesome. You take a couple photos and then you're like, wow, sick, I already got them done. You show it to them and they're like, yeah, these look great. Now you get back to editing and you pick your favorite one and you hand it over to them and they're like, oh, sorry, this looks awesome, but you know, uh, Mary doesn't like her face in it. <laughs> Come on, I say Mary, but you get the idea. And so if you don't really have a couple other good shots, that's gonna be a problem. So for this particular photo, I had to do something that was kind of crazy, which was actually uh, take a face of one person in a different shot and put it in that photo because the photo that, you know, the final one that I showed and that's on the billboard is perfect aside from like a couple things that I had to do with it and one person, you know, uh, wasn't looking at the camera. So I had to basically take another shot where they were looking at the camera, put it on this one and luckily that was able you know, that was able to work out. But if I hadn't taken extra shots, had other ones that worked, I don't know what I would have done. So the key is to definitely take more than you need. What I like to do is take a couple sets, go back to them, show them, come back, do some more, come back, do adjustments and so forth. And eventually you'll land on the one that you need. Lastly, tip number four is go the extra mile in editing. I spent a ton of time on this image, especially like I already mentioned where I had to Photoshop some faces in. I had to also bring in the background with another photo so you can see the skyline. Uh, but I basically retouched everyone's face to try and look as perfect as possible. I had to move some things in the floor in editing that I couldn't do there. We had to do this really ridiculous setup where we basically had, and I'm so glad Wes had this for some reason, he had a big giant white yellow cloth 
uh, and where the sun was coming in for the shot was hitting the team like super harsh. And we didn't have blinds to pull down because they all came down, not just one. So for a second, I didn't know what I was gonna do, but then he brings out this big yellow sheet thing and uh, diffuses the sun hitting them on the side, which was perfect. <laughs> And then also I did some dodge and burning in Photoshop to just even out all the exposure for everybody. And that's how I landed on that final image. It's just so cool that this final image is definitely worth having on a billboard because like I mentioned earlier, it is definitely super expensive. I remember some people I was working with, they looked into it and it's a lot. And so the fact that your photography is worth enough to be up there to represent this team or brand is awesome. So other than that, we also created this team photo, did another variation of it, and then my friend Wes was shooting video of this setup and we made a little uh, video teaser. And so that's actually another bonus tip where you can actually create little mini packages for something like this to actually go the extra mile and make a little bit more on your end by uh, offering more services. And they also had the idea of doing like a small little video, so now we created a package deal where we could offer all that and you know make a little bit more and produce some more awesome content. And I also just did another team photo shoot not too long ago where they told me they're gonna put this on a billboard as well. Awesome. So leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down your thoughts, and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be part of the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.